growing up, it was it was always hard for me to, to see really anything. Uh, so that little vision that I did have, I had to really, really, really work to use it. I was diagnosed with the disease at six months old, uh, they told my mom that I had the type of LC that would either remain stable or slightly improve over time, which was not the case. That doesn't happen with LCA. We actually didn't find that out until we noticed a, a drastic decline in my vision at around 11, 12 years old. And that's when we started to do more research uh, on Facebook, actually, and we just typed in Lieber's congenital amaurosis and we found an LCA support group. And through them, we were able to go to Philadelphia for an LCA conference. And that's where I was tested at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And that's also where we found out that I would be going completely blind by the time I hit age 15 to 30. I remember growing up and not being able to do as many things as everybody else was doing, like uh, at these big barbecues at my grandma's house. And they'd be playing Manhunt, they'd be playing all these games. And all I remember is sitting, you know, with my parents uh, or sitting by a light inside the house uh, because I couldn't see anything beyond, I'd say, f four or five o'clock when it started to get a little darker. I was proud of the things that I could accomplish, like hitting a baseball on the off chance or playing with my cousins and, and catching a football. Just smaller things felt like a huge victory to me when I was younger. We actually met Dr. Bennett at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia where we went for my testing when we went for the first uh, LCA conference. LCA stands for labor congenital amaurosis. It's a group of diseases which all have the same bindings. It's severe visual impairment in very young children, often babies. This is a very rare disease. In the United States, we estimate that there, there are between 600 and 1,000 people with this condition. Worldwide, there are probably more like 10,000. But the truth is, we don't really know because until recently, there was no treatment for any of these conditions. And many people, uh, uh, families who had a child born with this condition were told I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. You have to go home and teach your child braille and how to use a blind cane. Whatever vision they have at birth slowly deteriorates because it's a degenerative disease as well. So the cells in the retina die off over time. One of the genes uh, that has received a lot of attention, the one that affects Christian Gardino, is called RPE65, it stands for retinal pigment epithelium 65 kilodalton protein. And I remember running over to the clinic and telling them, guess what? Christian has the RPE65 gene defect. And that was a stunning moment because we had already initiated the phase three clinical trial. And this was an opportunity for Christian to actually participate. I go back every year for a yearly follow-up and everything is, is looking stable, everything is going really, really well. And um, I've been able, I've been able to, to see such incredible things since the gene therapy, like, like the moon, the stars, the sunsets, fireworks, snow falling, just so many things that, that I've had the opportunity to witness. And, and now I, I just can't take any of those things for granted. I remember waking up right from that surgery, that first surgery I woke up and I already noticed a difference and I remember seeing my mom and dad's face for the first time in, in very clear detail and actually being able to see what they looked like which was 
The words can't describe that experience. You ready for the show to get started? You ready to do your thing? We found out about the Apollo on my birthday and I was turning 13 and my aunt was looking online for different things that I could do performance wise and we saw that the Apollo was having auditions for amateur night and we've all you know heard of the Apollo before we knew what the Apollo was showtime at the Apollo and how very very honest the crowd is at the Apollo and I was really nervous but my aunt was like come on let's do it and the week after I had the audition and I was I was so nervous, but it went really well. I sang Who's Loving You by the Jackson 5, uh, and then I, I made it to the amateur night shows. One of the biggest things that came from America's Got Talent was being able to help people with LCA and, and, and with the disease that I had because they don't know who to go to. When Howie hit that golden buzzer, the, I think the first thing that went through my mind was, what? I thought it was just gonna be like, ah ha ha, no! <laughs> like, and I look up and I see all the confetti just coming down and I reached up and I grabbed a piece of it. I've been able to release original music since America's Got Talent. One of the first songs that I've ever written and I got to record that song with Hunter Hayes which was such an incredible experience, and it's called Waiting. That's still really fresh, and that was so exciting. I've been waiting, waiting. I've been waiting, just waiting for you. I wrote Waiting at a time where I started to notice a lot of my friends getting into these very, very serious relationships. I'm like, man, I want that. Around that time, I met somebody who's really, really nice. She was just such a cool, down-to-earth girl. And I just started writing about that. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I've been waiting, waiting for you. Hunter Hayes wanted to spend a day in the studio together. One of the first things he says to me when he walked in the studio was, so I heard you uh, had something you're, you're working on. I was like, oh, you did, huh? I was like, okay. So I, I took my phone out and I started singing it. And as soon as I started singing, he started to play the guitar, and then we just built the song from the ground up, and about six, seven hours later, we had Waiting. Waiting, just waiting. I want people to, to see something different, to experience something different. I want them to have different favorite parts and, and interpret the, the lyrics and the message to what they're going through. That's kind of what I want people to know going into my music.